it was about capturing the noise in the room. Steve Albini, by his own estimate, recorded more than a thousand albums, including PJ Harvey's Rid of Me. He talked to NPR in 2011 about the lessons he wanted to pass along. You don't get anywhere by mimicking the people who did it poorly in the mainstream. You accomplish things by working within your means and by keeping as much control of your own existence as possible. Oh. WNYC is supported by BAM. This Memorial Day weekend, Dance Africa is back for its 47th year, celebrating Cameroon with performances, classes, film, art, and outdoor bazaar, and more. Tickets and information at bam.org slash danceafrica. This is WNYC Marketplace Morning Report is coming up next, and then in 10 minutes at 9... It's the BBC News Hour. Let's check in with London to see what they're working on. Good morning, WNYC. I'm James Menendez. Today on NewsHour, how a groundbreaking gene therapy treatment helped a little girl born deaf to now hear unaided. We'll talk to her family. Also, a former Saudi intelligence officer tells the BBC the government sanctioned the use of lethal force to clear land for a futuristic desert city. That's BBC NewsHour at nine on WNYC. It is 62 degrees right now. We'll be warming up to about 72 this afternoon with sun and clouds. Looks like a pretty good chance of showers, though, later in the afternoon. Maybe a 50-50 chance and no showers likely this evening. And rain after midnight tonight into Friday. Rain all day tomorrow and much cooler. Near steady temperatures in the lower 50s looking toward the weekend. Sun and clouds Saturday. Just a very slight chance of a shower and then a bit better chance later in the day, especially Saturday night and Sunday, about a 40% chance. Highs this weekend around 60. This is WNYC at 850. WNYC is supported by The Met, now on view on The Met's roof. Petrit Halilai sprawling installation inspired by children's drawings found on school desks. Museum admission is pay what you wish for New Yorkers. Learn more at metmuseum.org. On the next Ryan Lair show, on the things to do before election day list, Biden's race to Trump-proof his legacy. That's how Politico describes the need to spend billions of dollars fast on climate, infrastructure, and other things passed by Congress, but the Trump might undo. We'll hear details. Also, WNYC's Nancy Solomon with excerpts from an analysis of her Ask Governor Murphy call-in show. The Brian Lair Show, weekdays at 10 a.m. on WNYC. Will a new iPad crush the human spirit or consolidate it? Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Fidelity. A dedicated advisor can help create a wealth plan for a full financial picture. Investment minimums apply. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC. I'm David Brancaccio. First, members of Gen Z are starting out their adult lives with more debt. The Credit Bureau TransUnion has some new numbers that show that borrowers aged 22 to 24 are carrying an average of about $2,800 in credit card debt. Now, if you adjust for inflation, that is about 25% more than millennials in the same age range had a decade ago. Here's Marketplace's Savannah Marr. 20-somethings a decade ago were slow to start borrowing, says analyst Ted Rossman with Bankrate. Millennials were really scarred by the Great Recession, but it doesn't seem like Gen Zers have quite the same stigma surrounding debt. The report finds they're about 20% more likely to have a credit card, but they're not racking up debt on fun stuff, says Charlie Wise with TransUnion. The Gen Z consumer today is facing significantly higher prices and turning to debt and to credit cards really to kind of help them make ends meet. And increasingly, they're carrying credit card debt with an average of 25 percent interest. Ted Rossman says that could prevent young borrowers from making other financial moves down the road. Whether that's buying a home or getting married or having kids. Sound familiar? Maybe millennials and Zoomers aren't so different. I'm Savannah Meyer for Marketplace. About a half hour before markets open, S&P and NASDAQ futures are little changed. Dow futures are down a tenth of a percent. In Apple's magnificent ad from 1984 launching the Macintosh, the brand is depicted liberating the human spirit from Orwellian oppression. But in an Apple ad launching new products this week, 
There's one that can be read as crushing the creative spirit into the shape of a thinner iPad. And the ad is not sitting well with many. Here's Marketplace's Nancy Marshall Genzer. The ad starts with the soundtrack of the Sonny and Cher song, All I Ever Need Is You, playing in the background. It shows a record player, metronome, piano, bust of a human head, and other symbols of human creativity between two plates of a massive metal crusher. They're slowly squashed, the paint exploding, the head bending back grotesquely, the piano folding. Then the mess disappears and a new iPad Pro appears in its place. The backlash is intense. Actor Hugh Grant wrote on X, The destruction of the human experience, courtesy of Silicon Valley. Another X user says the ad idolizes tech over real life. Apple hasn't responded to our request for comment. I'm Nancy Marshall Genzer for Marketplace. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Progressive Insurance, helping protect small businesses and the owners who run them. Whether a plumber, accounting business, or restaurant, Progressive can help with over 30 customizable coverages. Online quotes available in as little as six minutes at ProgressiveCommercial.com. And by Million Bazillion, a podcast from Marketplace that makes it fun and easy for parents to teach their kids about money. Listen to Million Bazillion wherever you get your podcasts. How to Make the Economy Better Serve More People. We're on the lookout here today, a new book called The Guarantee, Inside the Fight for America's Next Economy. It argues for bold thinking at a time that unemployment is running low, yet economic insecurity remains persistently high. The author of the book is Natalie Foster, president of the Economic Security Project, and she joins us now. Welcome. It's wonderful to be here. So not a time for incremental thinking? Indeed, not a time for incremental thinking. You know, we live in a moment where four out of 10 Americans can't pull together $400 in an emergency. And it's a time for reimagining 